Hello, everybody. I'm going to give a quick update on the remaining seminars. So we're going to do one this Sunday, which we will finish our conversation on hormones. Unfortunately, I only got through a very little bit because there was a lot of great questions last Sunday. Um, but I will finish up what I wanted to talk about on hormones this Sunday, and that will be combined with sleep and Oof, can't be understated, everybody, and you will see why. The following Sunday, we will talk about anxiety and depression, and then we will skip the 22nd, and on the 29th will be our final seminar. But that final seminar, I will review every single thing that we did for the previous 11, and I promise that the last seminar will reveal basically how to fix heart disease. But I think you guys are already secretly figuring this out as you go through these seminars, that everything, everything is the pathway to heart disease. Everything we've been talking about left unchecked is the pathway. But of course, I have some bombshells to drop on that final seminar. But I will spend about eight minutes reviewing each week the important highlights that you need to know, and I will weave together the arguments that um, we've been talking about regarding your immune system, heart disease, organ function, you, you, you get where I'm going. Um, I will also reveal to you guys that following week, I, uh, somewhere along that first week of April, what you didn't know is a secret that's been going on is that my son Jordan Phillips, like his dad, has been walking the talk these last 12 weeks. And we did a before picture of Jordan back in the beginning of January. And I'm going to show you an after picture of Jordan in the beginning of April. And all he's been doing since he's finished school is, you know, he's had the time now to, to train and, and dial in. Now, obviously, you saw Jordan was never overweight. But when you see the difference in his body and really dialing in on the strategies we've been talking about, you guys know he, he's been a vegan. But uh, when you combine it all together, you're going to see how a body can transform. I wanted to also um, share with you guys my before and after pictures. So I will show you what I've been doing. And um, what I, as you guys know, I don't like to tell you guys anything about what I do until I do it myself and not for a day or a week. But over the course of the past few months, I've been working on modifying some things with uh, the UTC protocol. And you guys can judge for yourself what you think. So Jordan's been doing it. I've been doing it. Um, and I can't tell you. I mean, you, you'll, those guys, the guys who train with me, they'll be the first ones to tell you, yeah, I see a difference in Tom's workouts and his energy. But you'll also see a difference in my physique. I'm, I'm confident of that. Finally, I wanted to share a quick uh, question that was given. So there was a question. This is a great question. Somebody asked a question regarding... Um, breathing, we did a whole breathing seminar and the thrust of it had to do breathing through your nose and we did some control pauses and whatnot. And I, I gave you guys some research and explained how nitric oxide works through the, through the nasal passages and, and not through your mouth and how important nitric oxide is to your heart and many other things and getting oxygen to where it really belongs in your body. We went through a whole bunch of things, but it really has to do with how you breathe and we saw that most people were breathing wrong. And many of you started to delve into the research here and saw how critical this is and what a big problem this is in, in many aspects. It is the underlying cause of asthma and um, it is the underlying cause of the problem with sleep apnea. Uh, that's really the main issue here is when you stop breathing and you do this, <gasps> wake up, <clears throat> you're not breathing through your nose. And again, I'll, I'll say it again, that one of the main ways that your body uh, makes nitric oxide is, is through the nasal passage. Again, if you don't believe me, look that up yourself. It's a, it's a big deal. Um, it's not just the foods you eat. It's how you breathe for, for nitric oxide. Um, so the question was, well, what if I can't breathe through my nose because I'm so stuffy all the time from allergies and whatnot? Well, I will tell you this, uh, it, maybe it's from allergies and we can have a separate discussion about allergies, but 
let me say that some people who have stuffy noses all the time, what, what is probably happening, depending on their present state of health, um, and, and it's actually a woman that was asking this problem. So let me give you an example of, of how this could, could happen. Um, women uh, have estrogen, as you know, and we talked a little bit about estrogen last week. There are lots of foods along with hormones that can raise histamine and histamine can affect lots of different things in the body. One of them being your nose. So you get kind of stuffies for some people, it's their skin, for some people it's their gut, you get the idea. But when your histamine gets really high, uh, it is not uncommon for you to start going stuffy, stuffy, stuffy nose. And for some people, that histamine is high all of the time. So who would that include? Well, it, again, women with high estrogen, people that use NSAIDs all the time, meaning ibuprofen, Advil, or any of that stuff, uh, that is a huge DAO inhibitor. DAO is the gene. We talked about the DAO gene in one of our seminars and some of the more consequential genes in your body and what they do. But DAO in the gut helps break down histamine and it inhibits the body's ability to break down histamine. Now, there are lots of reasons for histamine to continue to get higher and higher and higher. But generally, in an unhealthy body, in an unhealthy gut who keeps taking and SEDs and is eating foods that are super high in histamine. And some of those foods are actually healthy foods. Like, so basically leftovers um, or uh, um, your, your uh, kimchi, anything that's fermented because it's high bacteria. Now, again, what have I been saying? I've been saying that, you know, exercise, is, when, you, when you train hard, right? Training hard is for healthy body people. Training hard is not for sick people. We talked about foods that work via the hormetic response, and we talked about f foods like kimchi and whatnot. If you're an unhealthy person eating these foods, they can actually have detrimental consequences to you. And we explained why, and that's why it's so important that you attend seminars and learn you know, what's happening in your body, because just because you hear something's healthy doesn't mean it's healthy for you. But point being, this is a person that is eating foods that are super high in histamines and um, um, takes NSAIDs all the time because they're in chronic pain, um, has uh, certain food allergies or food sensitivities that we talked about, and, uh, and a DAO, uh, which is genetic, a, a dirty DAO gene. Again, that's genetic. Now, this person could be stuffy all of the time. So how do they clear out their nose? Well, we gave you one strategy in the seminar about breathing, but if that doesn't work, you need to clean that up. You need to clean up that histamine. 